out and you notice her as she goes into the herd as a pretty horse should in this two and a half minute period to work and cut out a yearling and cut it away from the herd and keep it from returning to the herd. That is the whole purpose of a cutting horse contest which is conducted under actual ranch conditions under which cattle are cut from a herd for shipment to market, doctoring, moving to another pasture, shaping up a bunch of cattle. And this way a cutting horse shows his economic value and his worth. These horses earn their keep at home and go to the contest arena as you see here and do an excellent job of uh, ranch work at its best. Now the judging is done by two very capable men, Mr. Leon Lock of Hungerford, Texas, Mr. Artie Tadlock of Fort Worth, Texas, who are judging under National Cutting Horse Association rules and marking from 60 to 80 points. And uh, West and his horse, Mary and Girl. Buster, where do you come from? Midland, Texas. And where is that at? It's in far west Texas. Far west Texas. How long does it take to train one of these horses from the start? Oh, I'd say from the time you break them till they're what you call a pretty well finished cutting horse, two to three years. And what do you do when you're not training horses, or is that your full-time job? Well, I, <clears throat> I train horses and ranch, too. I, I see. And what do you think one of these good cutting horses is worth? Well, I'd say any of these uh, horses in this finals here is worth between, you know, 15000 to $25,000. Fine. And about how long does, from the time you start until you finish, uh, does it take this horse to get to be a polished horse? Well, from the time you actually start cutting cattle on them, it takes a, a good time. <laughs> It is now 2.32 in Dallas, and the tempo of this great Southwest Fair is quickening. 300,000 people on an autumn holiday. We'll be joining them again later. Through the eyes of live television, you have just seen act one of an American Sunday afternoon in autumn. And as the man in Dallas said, there's October in the land and fairs in the air. And we'll be continuing this autumn show in just a moment. Now, what do we have here? I believe, uh, yes, yes it is. It's a man uh, who is playing golf and has secured himself a very bad lie here, apparently. Not unplayable, though. That tire in back of him, however, is no lie. That's real. It's on a sort of a rich giant's tinker toy. In fact, recently I saw a herd of these monsters grazing out in Chicago. So did Nelson Case, and he's going to tell you about it right now. As soon as this one comes in and runs over us. What, look out, look out. Dave, the occasion was General Motors' Powerama, the world's fair of power, during which huge pieces of earth-moving equipment became mambo dancers. Hard to believe? Well, just watch these big Euclid crawler tractors do the mambo. Yes, there was so much to see and wonder at during the Powerama show. The Euclid 50-ton rear dump, for instance, the largest of its kind in the world, converted to a swimming pool for the occasion. And the General Motors Electromotive Oil Rig in actual operation. The cotton gin got its share of attention, as did the new Lockheed Pogo VTO fighter plane. GM Marine Diesel Power was represented, too. Yes, in the world of power, the almost unbelievable world of Powerama, once again, General Motors leads the way, starting with Delco Battery.
This is act two of A Sunday in Autumn. How fast have you ever gone in a boat for a ride? Maybe 20 miles an hour, even 30? 30 is pretty fast for a boat. But there was only one man alive who has gone over 200 miles an hour in a boat. That man is getting set at this moment in a jet-propelled speedboat at Lake Mead, Nevada. Might even break his own world's record. This is Lake Mead. Well, it's only Sunday afternoon in Melbourne. Just the right time and right place for Donald Campbell of England to make his dangerous run against the water barrier. Here on a sunny Sunday afternoon in Autumn, in the amazing surroundings of real antiquity, of the colorful confines of a man-made lake, where not many years ago trails were dusty and impassable, now we again attempt today to make another chapter of history. This is Lake Mead, 115 miles long and 500 miles of shoreline. This is Ted Husing at Lake Mead, a great body of inland water nestled under these hilly guardians that rise with all inspiring tranquility to contain this vivid picture of placidity and attempted world record-breaking speed. Because Donald Campbell of Surrey, England, trials this day to break his own world record of speed in one run over the water surface. Now, to bring you this picture, let me show you our manner of operation. From our camera tower, 40 feet above bow point, you now see our tented control room where the average of this run, the coverage, is coordinated. Moving west, the location you see next is the spot from which I am speaking, and another camera ground mounted nearby. Now, as we move up the rocky slopes of Burrow Point, you see the equipment used to beam our pictures and sound to a mountain top 65 miles away, and then from there to you. Burrow Point itself is dead center of this one mile course, across which Donald Campbell has just completed the first one of two and did not go for a record. The semi official device that you see to my left is connected to the judge's clocks and it shows the time of a one-mile run. Meanwhile, back on the lake, Donald Campbell is standing about four miles away at Beacon Rock, where at the moment the Bluebird is being refueled for another run. Through the 60-inch eye of a special lens developed by station KING-TV in Seattle, this is Beacon Rock four miles away. We have radio communication with the Bluebird, so let's cut off our Beacon Rock camera location and talk to the fastest man in the water. Donald Campbell, Donald Campbell, are you there? I'm here, Ted, yes. Well, that's good. What happened on the first one? Can you tell me? We'll get to him. Tell me what happened on the first one. Well, Ted, I was, I'm heartbroken. Uh, we you had to come down so slowly. The time speed was only 147 miles an hour or something. There was a very long... Oily swell moving across this vast and wonderful lake now, which has been created by the large num number of craft and general traffic that's been moving across it during the morning. I was getting very high uh, loadings in the cockpit, according to my G-meter, and really I'm heartbroken. We haven't been able to show you the boat going really quickly. Well, good luck, good luck, Donald. Try the next one, and we shall watch for you. And so you understand, ladies and gentlemen, tension mounts at Lake Mead. And the pace will be fast when we come back to Lake Mead, for there is an upbeat in the autumn air this afternoon. Here we are at the State Fair of Texas again. Let's take a tour down the midway. That's set them up and knock them down. Everybody wins, nobody loses. You can get rich in a few minutes here. Hi there. Whoops, our picture from the Texas State Fair has disappeared for a moment, but there it is back again. Just people out having a good time. And people can't have much more than that, can they? Looks like Greg Garson a little bit. Oh, the kids' rides, gee. That's where the memory starts, you know. There's memories being made right in front of your eyes. Wonder what ever happened to the Dodgem. That used to be my favorite. I guess that's the Caterpillar Crawl. Of course, there are rides for uh, adults, too, and guided tours by special kinds of people, like our friend the father. Well, there's a new one I haven't seen before. Two machine guns in every 